Hope you're doing well. My name's Haley. I'm David. And you know, Haley, with all this time where we're not supposed to be out partying or going to movies or those kinds of things, it's a good time to sit down and, you know, recharge. It's a good time to study some of the things that we learn and kind of refresh our memory and, and strengthen our memory. And so one of the questions we get here in the lab quite a bit has to do with durability. And um, as you know, I worked in the dams industry mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. And as you might guess, durability is pretty key in dams. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> you've got the operational durability. You don't want your spillways to break up and wash away. And you've got the long-term durability. You don't want your very expensive dam that was very hard to build. You don't want it to crack up and fall down and whatnot. So, you know, a hundred year design life or more key in, in concrete dams, very mm -hmm. key. So when I was at the Bureau of Reclamation, a very good friend of mine, Tim Dolan, um, was studying durability. The, the features at the Bureau were averaging more than 50 years, many of them already more than 100 years, because right. the Bureau was formed in 1902 and began building structures at that time. And one of the, one of the um, flagship is Hoover Dam mm -hmm. near Las Vegas, built right around the Depression period, okay. uh, with coming out of the um, out of the Depression. So Tim spent a lot of time studying durability, and I'm going to um, I'm going to take the opportunity to sort of abstract and boil it down uh, to sort of a, a brief discussion of, of Tim's work. And so Tim starts in 1902 the, when the bureau starts because mm -hmm. you know. I mean, the Bureau's paying for it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, and whatnot, so there's some incentive to sort of, you know, do what you're getting paid for. And, you know, at that time, we were still kind of almost making up as we went along. I mean, you know, it just, we kind of lost the Roman technologies, I mean, mm -hmm. we kind of lost that. And they had very specialized cements and limestones there, so it's, it's different region to yeah. region. So yeah, so Tim goes on to tell us about, and in the West in 1902, I mean, it's hard to imagine now, but when the Bureau was starting to build dams here in the West, um, it, man, it was really the Wild West. I mean, we're talking sure. uh, mules and wagons, and we're talking, best case, maybe a rail line. Wow. Um, not much sophisticated equipment like we have these days. I mean, it was really remote, and so you did did what you could. And so the 1902 period, Tim's talking about, we've got hand mixing, we've got um, poor quality materials, we don't know much about chemical attack yet, we don't know much about the sulfates, we don't know much about the ASRs yet, uh, we're not real familiar with freeze thaw yet, um, and it's going to come to pass soon that we'll learn more of a chemistry and science about uh, cement and about concrete. So, so Tim goes on to talk about 1918 then, the Abrams work. We all know about Abrams Law, right? Mm -hmm. Abrams Law is that the water cement ratio affects the strength. Okay. And it wasn't really until after the, um, the Abrams work that we understood that. That was pretty, wow. pretty much foundation work in the 1918-1920 uh, time period when Abrams did that work. And in my mind, at least, that sort of began the real science of concrete mixing. Mm -hmm. You know, it just wasn't really go in the form, you know, it just wasn't, you know, anything like that. So the water cement ratio work by Abrams, Abrams Law, was, was key to the onset of the future of concrete as, as we were to know it today. And Tim talks about, we begin to get mixed design, actual formulas and recipes, um, because of Abrams Law, okay. and um, we begin to learn, you know, about um, voids, about mixing gravel and sand and mm. filling voids and pasting them together with the cement and whatnot. But if they had problems in the field, you know, finishing or getting in the forms, what do you think they did? Put more water. They put more <laughs> water. We're still adding water to fix our problems. And Abrams told us not to do that, mm -hmm. but we're still doing it. We're still in the, let's just add water. So at the Bureau in about 1928, um, we decided to build Hoover Dam. 
Now we built Olympus Dam in Oregon as a precursor to, okay. to Hoover. It's kind of the same design. It's a gravity arch. Um, it's got a lot of the same principles to it, how it ties into the foundations and whatnot. But basically that was a precursor to Hoover. Hoover was the grand dame of, of the time. Yeah. And still to this day, it's considered one of the eight mar engineering marvels of the yeah. world. It's still considered a pretty, pretty big deal. So Tim describes how the Bureau began to make changes during that time, that we were careful now about batching. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have a mixed design and we batch it out in certain quantities. And we're, order. and we're careful now about how we place it. Mm -hmm. We start to use consolidation, we start to use some vibrators instead of shoveling it in or stomping on it or whatever. We have a more um, uh, quality method, a more repeatable method of getting in the forms. And of course at Hoover we went into block construction because of the the heat of the mm -hmm. uh, curing, we built humongous blocks. There'd be a block here, a space, a block here, a space. You'd come fill it in, mm -hmm. and then you'd go block, 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 block to, cool. to allow the uh, heat heat to uh, to um, participate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so that that was part of it, and the heat. We have to be careful with heat, as we know now. The heat from hydration. I mean, it's increases in volume, mm -hmm. and increase in volume is tension, mm -hmm. concrete's weak in tension, so that's a problem, and then it expands somewhat while it's still plastic, and then it tries to shrink mm -hmm. under restrained boundary condition, and so that, although it's shrinking, which should be compression, if it's restrained, that also causes tension, because one piece will lock up and the next piece will try to move away from, mm -hmm. move away from it, mm -hmm. so it also causes tension. So, and with Hoover, we are careful about the cements that we start to use. We just, you know, we're careful about that, the quality of the cement. We start to use some poslins, we start to use some, okay. some fly ash. So that 28 period is a, is a very critical time where we begin to understand the science of the cement mm -hmm. and the science of the uh, concrete mixing, the engineering, if you will, of the concrete itself. Tim moves up to after World War II and uh, 1948 to the 2000s. And then now after, after the World War, people are coming home, we've got a lot of smart people doing a lot of construction. We're starting no, to sure. reconstruct, we're starting to build houses for all the people coming home, factories. It's um, almost a rebuilding of America in, in a way in that time period, moving more over to manufacturing and getting all the folks to work to build the country itself as opposed to fighting a war somewhere else. And so we begin to see new construction methods, we begin to see new transport methods. So in dams we see a lot of new things on the construction side now. We see some developments, we continue to see um, use of poslins, we can begin to see in the 1970s, 1980s, we begin to see development of more admixtures, okay. um, you know, water reducers, those kinds of things in the 70s and 80s. So it's an advent of a, of a new science in, in concrete chemistry and concrete mixing. Or maybe it's the engineering. It's how to mm -hmm. combine things and, and make it better. So we come into the 2000s, what Tim refers to as the modern concrete. And that's a good term. But it's now 2020. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I don't fault Tim's work at all. Sure. And I think we've continued to have the modern concrete, but now it's even more modern. Mm -hmm. The modern concrete. <laughs> the modern modern rest or <laughs> concrete. So and we do a lot of work here with that. Mm -hmm. What do we do here to help with that? All kinds of innovative glow in the dark, 3D printing. Yeah, we do a lot of admix. Well, I hate to call glue silk an admix. We're trying to get sure. trying to get away from that. We do a lot of additives for concrete. Mm -hmm. As our fly ash gets less plentiful and has a lower quality, yeah. we have to kind of make up that difference. Mm -hmm. and we do a lot of work here with the colloidal silica, which helps boost the strength, boosts the workability. It yeah. doesn't take very much of it, mm -hmm. so that's a good product. So yeah, we're working on the modern mm -hmm. <laughs> concrete here as we move on. So that's kind of a flyover on the door 
of durability in concrete, when we had the poorer concretes, they weren't very durable. So as we improved the chemistry and improved the engineering of the mixed designs, concrete became stronger, it became easier to use, but more importantly for dams, it became more durable. Mm -hmm. And so strength isn't everything. You know, Absolutely. We, we want to make things that will last as long as they can, both to help the environment and we want to look at life cycle cost mm -hmm. and uh, service life cost. We work a lot with service life cost, which is the cost of the material and how long it'll last. You work with the life cycle cost, mm -hmm. which is the cost of the environment, the carbon dioxide, yeah. and all those kinds of things. That's really, really more of your specialty. I'm more on the service life side, yeah. side myself. So, okay, so that's an overview of 1902 to. To now. To now, pretty much, just to have some feel for how things progressed. And, you know, engineering is a lot about what happened before. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn as we go. We, it's very, engineering is very collegiate. We learn from others' mistakes. And so we've gotten to a good place today, and we'll get to a better place as time Tomorrow. Goes, as tomorrow, as time yeah. goes on, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much what I had to, had to talk to you about. Thanks, David. I really did learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tim really, um, really organizes well. It's, it's, um, it's, I think it's really helpful to think about these kind of historical steps. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Hope okay. you learned something. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go Congress! Beat asshole.